All right, we are streaming live. Um, so on this beautiful Monday, 20th of April, thanks for joining us. Um, I couldn't think of anybody better uh, when I'm looking for representations when we for Luxury Lunch and Learn. This is our fifth episode, and we're trying to get different perspectives from top agents to influencers to um, next week I'm going to have Rebecca Jensen who runs the six largest MLS um, and uh, so getting different perspectives and I was so impressed with uh, your association we've done some trainings for you guys and I attended your Miami Congress event um, and uh, Linda Fernandez and your staff did an amazing job so I wanted to have uh, you on as a guest so thank you for your time it's my pleasure. Um, we kind of adopted you in Miami and we love you. You're one of our favorite trainers, luxury trainers. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot. I do appreciate that. Uh, so, you know, you're uh, highly regarded, one of the most influential people in real estate. Uh, and uh, before I have you, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, just a reminder for those of you that are streaming live or on this, please type in your questions that you have for myself or Teresa Kenny, who is the CEO of the Miami Association of Realtors, the largest association in the United States, and I believe the second largest in the world, correct? Right. Uh, so you Toronto, guys have- Toronto's number one. Toronto's number one in agent count, and uh, you're number two. You guys have over 46,000. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that accurate? We actually have 46,000 primary members, but our total number of members that we serve is uh, 52,000. So 52,000. And what I love about the Miami Association of Realtors is your uh, – proactiveness to communi communicate and connect um, and network internationally. To, and so that's something I definitely want to talk about um, on today's show. And um, so if you guys have any questions, those of you who are watching, whether it be through Zoom or through Facebook, type your questions in. I have a staff member that's looking at those and we'll have some dedicated Q&A um, at the end here today. So Miami Association of Realtors, over 46,000 uh, primary members. Uh, you know, Toronto and Miami is like lots of, lot of large cities. It's a, it's a melting pot. You have different languages, different cultures, which is so great. Um, talk to me a little bit about how long you've been in uh, the position as the CEO of the Miami Association of Realtors. And uh, let's start there, I guess, Teresa. Okay, I've been here 27 years. I was an exec at a small board in Missouri. And when I came to Miami, it was 1993, and they had 5,000 members at the time. Jeez, 1993, the year I graduated high school, 5,000 members. <laughs> yeah, make me feel bad. <laughs> no, 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 that was not. So, 93, okay, so 5,000 members at the time. And uh, so, fast forward today, um, you know, obviously we're in an unprecedented time. Um, and so through Zoom trainings like this, talk to me a little bit about like pivoting, uh, how the Miami Association of Realtors had, has pivoted in this time to bring value, bring trainings um, to your large member base. Sure, well, we like to say that we can turn on a dime, but this one even challenged us. One of our, uh, one of our leaders always used to say that she was hesitant to give us a suggestion because before she had decided whether how much she liked it, we would already have it implemented. So we're used to that. And then the other part of it is we're used to uh, needing to change um, locations because of hurricane um, alerts. And so we we have um, different procedures that we have set up, but this one was to to move all 65 staff to fully operational in their own homes. And we actually had started doing that ahead of time just in case, but we had to make the last changes in one day. And so we went from being open on a Monday to St. Patrick's Day being closed and 9 a.m. everybody was on the phones, on the computers and up and running and serving all the members. The other thing that we did over the weekend is on Thursday before that happened, we launched our new Miami Realtors Live Dot com. And so it's this huge video resource of, of all of the programs that we have had in recent years. 
And so we had been loading um, recorded videos, tutorials, webinars into it for some time, but we pulled out all the stops and between the Friday and over the weekend, by the time Tuesday morning hit, we had over 300 um, loaded onto Miami Realtors right. Live and over the weekend, growing numbers toward that. So people could access um, seminars and trainings and webinars and your program from the Miami Congress and yeah. your program from when you did the um, the luxury listing certification for us. And so all of those are available online to our members. And so that worked out really well. Then the next thing that the team did is they converted every seminar. We do 4,000 seminars a year. Jeez. So do they the math on that. That's over 10 a day. <laughs> yes. And that would also be if you include weekends, you know, which. Right, which, right. That would be if I yeah, included okay. weekends, which you're not doing. Yeah. So pretty busy organization. And yeah. we have uh, seven locations, soon to be eight. And we do seminars in all those locations. And so um, what, what we have um, been able to do was the team got all of the schedule for the rest of March all converted wherever we had a recorded video for that same topic. They got that live at that date, at that time, so that when members had already registered for it or went in to find any of those, all of that was up and running. As soon as that was done, they started concentrating on new content. And so we started with 300. Now we have well over 400 there that are recorded and available for our members. In addition to that, new ones like this have been on the calendar so that they could find it, click there, register, and go on. And so the number of those that we've done just in the past two and a half weeks, we have done 250 webinars, Zoom Jeez. seminars. 100 of those were unique. 150 of them were done by our partner organizations, either for us or ones that they already had scheduled. But 100 unique for us, for our members, webinars, Zoom seminars, um, tutorials, and 20,000 people have participated. That's just over two weeks. Oh my goodness. That is a major, I mean, first off, timing was perfect. So it sounded like um, Thursday, May 12th is when you were doing the Miami Live. So that was before the shelter in place and it pretty much everywhere. I mean, I was actually down in Mazatlan right about that that week, helping Keller Williams Mexico launch her luxury division. We, we had our we had our book, uh, Teresa, translated oh, to Spanish. Okay. We had our, our workbook translated to Spanish. And um, so it was it was a great honor. But while I was down there, literally, the uh, the NBA season was, you know, uh, post or not postponed, but suspended. The March Madness, all this was happening while I was down in Mexico. And um, it was just, you know, as, as you know, it just snowballed and more and more things. So you guys could have launched at a better time as far as, you know, ahead of the curve. I know it didn't, doesn't sound like you, you were necessarily doing that because of this, but the timing was perfect. Well, the launch was actually supposed to be two or three weeks away, but in our preparation for whatever might happen, uh, we met with them and they were able to work all, all week uh, up to the, the Thursday so that we could actually do a launch so that we would have all of this out there for our members at the time they no longer could come to our live events. Man, that's, that's awesome. Well, just a, just a reminder, just so I know the chat features work, and those of you that are uh, watching through Zoom or through Facebook, ch type, type in where you're watching from. In other words, I, Miami, I'm in uh, Coral Gables, I'm out of, you know, we had people on from uh, Costa Rica last week. Uh, I have somebody watching from Maryland right now, they're chiming in. So chime in where you're from, and uh, we're ready to have a question for Teresa, but we'll, we'll save those to the end, uh, because I want to make sure that we get through our topics as well. So uh, again, feel free to share this as well with folks on your Facebook. Um, you're, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can hit that share button to let other people know, bring value. I believe, Teresa, the fastest way to, for an agent to build credibility to their database, their sphere of people that know them, like them, and trust them, is to bring value, education, so that people realize that they're 
doing business or they're friends with or they're connected to uh, an advisor, a consultant versus a salesperson, right? So, um, so I'm, I'm, that's part of the reason I have you on is uh, your perspective. Um, so any words of advice that you would have for an agent, a team leader, um, a broker owner, whether they're in Miami or they're in other, some other part of the world that's uh, looking into breaking into luxury. Um, I guess this is kind of a, it could be now during the Corona COVID-19 period, or hey, when things subside, hopefully sooner than later, you know, any words of advice that you have? It sounds like you guys are really big on training. We are, we're big on training and we're also big on resources. So we bulk purchase a lot of services for our members. And um, later on in the program, I'll actually let you know about a couple of new ones oh, that, that we've added because we really believe that now is not the time to lay back. Now is the time to step it up. And so that's what I would encourage everyone who's watching this program to do. First of all, you're watching the program, whether you know me or not, whether you're familiar with Miami or not, you're doing the right thing because you're learning. You're watching Michael's programs to see who else he's bringing on. So never has there been so much, so many resources, so many great resources available that everybody could take advantage of. We're actually finding that um, some of our Zoom seminars it, the minimum is like 100 people. And sometimes there are 200, 300, 400 on them. And that's exciting for us because we hope that continues after all this is over. Yeah. Because it means that they're learning, they're growing, they're finding out new things. And no matter how long I've been doing this, if I go to a seminar on anything, I always pick up one or two or three good points at least. Mm -hmm. And I picked up great points from when you did our Congress program. And I was watching just snippets of that before getting on the program today. Okay. Um, but that's what you Thank need you. to do is you need to learn from others. You need to, to see what they're doing. You need to make notes. You need to figure out how you can implement those things. And learning from other luxury brokers and agents in particular is the best thing that you could do during this period of time. For Miami members and for those of you who are in other markets, take a look at what your association and your company are offering for you. You were probably too busy before to take advantage of a lot of those things, but now's the perfect time. You not only learn, but you learn more about the products and services, how to use them. And there are so many of those tools that you can take and use right now to better serve your customers, to better connect with new customers, and to sharpen your skills so that you're not only being really productive at this time, but you're, you're absolutely going to zoom it out there as soon as this all opens up. That, that, those are great words of advice, Teresa. Um, I was coaching, I, I am coaching an agent that's in the Orlando market, and she does a lot of um, REO, bank owned, lower price, entry level homes, if you will, and she wants to break into luxury. So she hired me to coach her, and um, she, you know, I won't mention any names, but she's a busy agent, right? And a lot of agents aren't the most organized because you're meeting with clients, you're out in the field so much. And so I really shared with her during this slower time period, this is the time to do some of those painstaking things from, you know, updating your database and, and doing some, the education, the, the, the trainings that maybe you were too busy to do, you know, while the market was picking up and you were working with buyers and sellers and prospecting, this is the time to do some of those fundamentals, to use a football analogy, the blocking and the tackling, some of the, the X's and O's and the fundamentals now, uh, while things are a little bit slower and you have some more time uh, at home to, to focus on these trainings. You know, there are other things that they can do during this period of time that are going to be benefit them now and benefit them for a long time to come. And that is uh, one of the new services that we just contracted for and launched last Thursday is called Emo Viewer. And it's, um, it will automatically do videos of whatever listings, the first 15 listings that you have in there. There are a couple of upgrades that it has where you can pay like $25 for it to create a floor plan mm -hmm. as long as you've done 360 um, okay. a video of each room. And then they have something called a dollhouse that actually when you can, you or the consumer goes into the dollhouse in one room, you can actually walk through the whole house 
and you see the floor plan and and I mean it's just absolutely amazing. So when we were talking to um, the head of the company, one of the things is he was doing training for our trainers that he said is take videos of your communities, take videos of the neighborhoods of the of the communities of different areas. Schools, and I hadn't sort of I hadn't even thought about using it for that. You don't have to get into anybody's home to go do a video of of neighborhoods or um, of of uh, downtown your your neighborhood downtown mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. areas or something else fantastic so i think we're going to do a contest for our members to go out oh, yeah? and do these of different areas yeah oh, nice nice yeah and those who want to allow them for us to have as a bank um that we oh, as the association what a great can idea. Use, that would be great because we could have it on our website and you know we travel around the world marketing miami mm -hmm. and marketing doing business with our with our members and so, um, you know, to have those kinds of resources for us would be really cool too. It's an interesting thing to do. And quite frankly, it will help you with your uh, videography skills. Well, wh what a great idea. So first off, uh, you know, when I do these trainings last year, we did 34 of them, you know, all over the, all over the world for that matter. And 10 to 20 percent of, of, it's been my experience during our live trainings, Teresa, of that 10 to 20 percent of the agents in the room are consistently putting videos out there. That was pre-corona, okay? 10 to 20 percent. And I said, what great opportunity. That means 80 to 90 percent of your competition isn't creating video. And so, um, this this new tool and resource that you have would be for their listings, but you're talking about community videos, you know, highlighting unique features of the community, that sort of thing. And and many agents that I've come across, some have either one of the other, scarcity mindset or an abundance mindset, but those agents that get it and say, hey, if I create a video for, you know, a certain neighborhood in Coral Gables and the Miami Association of Realtors uses it, that's a feather in that agent's cap as opposed to thinking of, oh, well, I'm sharing it with the, the, the competition. No, not you, now you can go to the owner saying, hey, the, the largest association saw so much value in my video, you know, that they incorporated into their library. If you hire me, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, I'll create a similar type video for your home. And the other thing that it does is it really helps them to be better at videos. We, uh, we're getting ready to launch a a relaunch our um, open house program. And it's one that the members can set up in the MLS when the property is going to be open. And then it goes into this open house program, which is really amazing. We had to shut it down because people weren't supposed to be doing open houses at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we are retooling it and it's almost finished and ready to go out again, strictly virtual. And in making these changes, they've also got it set up so that as soon as we can again, all we have to do is say, okay, flip it back. Um, but the additional benefit that we're doing this time is it's not only about virtual open houses that realtors will schedule for certain hours, certain days, and they'll be online and available to use the video and walk people through the home and, and they can invite an individual customer to do that at a particular time and talk to them about only the unique things that are interesting to them. But the other thing about it that is, is really amazing is that, you know, we've got um, Emo Viewer, we've got um, Home Snap. We were just in the final stages of implementing their um, their video tour. Okay. We have, yeah, we have. Um, we just upgraded. You know, I said time to step up, not retreat. We just upgraded all of our fifty thousand members to um, Remind Pro, and Remind Pro just launched last week, midweek, their new live video walkthrough. Huh. And so they have it for regular plus pro, but our job is to make sure that the Miami members always, always have the absolute best programs and services. So instead of several hundred dollars a year to have Remind Pro, now we bulk purchased it for all of our members. And so all of those resources and more are available for people to take advantage of these virtual property tours and virtual open houses. And so what we've done is every time we hear that, that something that we've got could be upgraded, revised, 
um, something happens to it so that members can take advantage of it right now, mm -hmm. we're doing that. So our team has been going crazy with all this stuff. It's great. Yeah, B Being able to adapt and pivot quickly, which it sounds yeah. like you guys, uh, such a huge organization um, is huge. You know, I, I mean, uh, the Star Wars, you have the, the mothership, right? And, and, and these big, yeah. big ships, are, they, 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 big, they don't move quickly, right? They don't adapt quickly. But uh, I'm amazed as for how many members you have and how many uh, staff that you have that you're able to adapt. So uh, kudos to you and your whole, your whole staff. Thank you. They're amazing. Yeah, they really are. So if uh, Linda and Letty and Kevin and uh, others that I know um, uh, are watching, thank you for all you do. Uh, they've been amazing to work with. Uh, in your opinion, when the shelter in place is lifted um, and agents, officer, teams, uh, this is kind of a fill in the blank, if you will, Teresa, the agents, office, and teams that will thrive when, when the shelter in place is removed are, are those that that blank have have blank in common. So those agents, teams, and offices that thrive when the shelter in place and, uh, and we're able to go about regular open houses, those that will thrive are those that have blank in common. Three things. Three, okay, perfect. All right, one of them is that they're using this time well. And so part of it is to update databases and the other kind of stuff you talk about, but part of it is to do what I was talking about earlier. It's all of these resources that are online now, learn from them. Learn from the people like you who are willing to share and the people that you bring on the program that are willing to share. Learn from, from the top producers, the luxury brokers. Learn from everyone that you can. Pick up the ideas that you can right now. Another is learn the tools and programs and services that you have available to you. The Miami Association has a huge number of those that are available to our members at no additional charge. It's just all part of the package. And many of those are exclusive to them. That mm -hmm. means that any other uh, competing people who belong to another association can't get a lot of those services. So take advantage of them. You, you stand out in the marketplace. In addition to that, stay connected. And so you talked about staying connected with your customers and sphere of influence and, and through all of the tools and services that I talked to you about, plus some of those community videos, you can stay in touch with people and give them information that they would really like to know, would like to find out more about and be valuable to them. So stay connected during this period of time. And the other thing is implement these services. So it's, it's a time like you'll hopefully never have again where you can go in and try different services, actually implement them and then continue to improve on your skills. Those uh, are the three things that are gonna work. Th those are very helpful and uh, implement is the key, right? I mean, I teach that when I do my live Absolutely. training. I, I was a former high school health and physical education teacher and I, I had to sign above the door. So when students left the class said, you know, the real test is when you walk out the door. Well, in this case, we're not walking out the door as much, but the key is that you're implementing, right? That you're getting better. Uh, there are plenty of tools and resources, and I hear that so much from broker owners or team leaders or franchisees that say, hey, we, we're giving agents tools and resources, but they're not like literally even logging in and looking at them. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, uh, very good. So thank you for that. Um, all right, next question for you would be on the, um, and, and I sent this over to you earlier. Um, from a luxury standpoint, um, is there anything, you mentioned videos, you mentioned uh, community open houses. Um, talk to me a little bit about internationally. So that's one thing I've been really impressed with the Miami Association of Realtors, more so than any association I've, I've ever seen. And part of it is because you have feeder markets and, and you have a lot of snowbirds and different people that, that have second houses there. But a lot of it is because you guys have been proactive and you put on this Miami Congress event. Uh, I, I attended and I was a presenter, uh, that was in October at uh, in Coral Gables uh, at the Biltmore Hotel, a very historic hotel. It was a, such a great event. I was so impressed. 
I was so impressed from a, a couple of reasons. So for those of you that are watching, hopefully the fall will still have events. So are, are you guys tentatively still planning on having the event in October um, with you and Linda Fernandez, do you know? Absolutely, it, uh, it's going to be in November because it's, wow. always, it's always three days prior to the very beginning of the NAR um, uh, annual business meetings. Okay. And so this year, this year, they'll be in New Orleans. And I, some people say maybe, maybe not. So, but right now everything is on for New Orleans. And so um, ours always starts on the Sunday before NAR. And we start on Sunday with our, usually we have 50, 60, 70 or 80 foreign delegates from all over the world come. And then one representative from each of the markets gets to talk about what's going on in their market and give us a briefing on that. And so that usually happens on Sunday. And then all day Monday, all day Tuesday, we have um, speakers like yourself come in, huge stage, you know, all of that. And then we just go bam, 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 about every 40 minutes, 35 minutes to an hour, there's a new speaker and it's all recorded and all available. Um, online afterwards. The people who attend get access to the videos immediately. Those who don't, then there's a, um, it's available for them down the road. Sure. But, um, and then there are uh, receptions every evening because with global, it's all about networking and getting to know each other and hopefully no masks. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, global, International and Miami just absolutely go together. We've been doing this. Um, I came 28 years ago, 27 years ago. We signed our first international agreement with Sokovi in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And now we have 221 signed agreements with uh, global associations around the world. And we're just launching our, a new global property exchange. So globalpropx.com is where we're sharing listings with our uh, partner associations and their members around the world. And if they have listings aggregated, then we will share those on our website. And so one of the first ones to be up, we already have the link to their listings, is Partner Association Toronto. We're oh. both celebrating our 100th anniversaries this year. They're an oh, amazing association. We had planned on being at their big expo this year yeah. until it had to be canceled. Yeah. But uh, they're a great partner association. And so they'll be one of the first. But we have our first 20 um, global partners ready to um, enter into this program. Oh, that's great. So 221 uh, uh, groups, uh, countries uh, that you have talked. So when, when an agent in Miami lists a, a property, uh, in theory, there, there's a feed going out and those properties are available in 221 other countries where you can view their listings and vice versa? Well, it's not countries. I think we have um, 60 uh, countries. In some markets like Mexico, which is really close with uh, the Miami market and their people are very interested in ours, we have um, I don't remember what the number is. Maybe we have 20 partnerships in Mexico. And so different than the National Association who tries to enter into agreements only with national organizations, ours is all about real estate. And so although we have national partners just signed Sweden and, and several others at the last national conference in San Francisco, but for us, it's also about local markets. So local, regional, state, national, whatever it is, we okay. want to be able to connect our members to their members. Mm -hmm. And um, for 27 years, it's worked beautifully. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you could t tell I didn't do real good in geography class. I don't think there's even 200 countries out there. So I misspoke, <laughs> but you, you know <laughs> I what I meant. So. <laughs> you, you never know. There's some really small ones. <laughs> um, but very, very good. So like, that's why I was so impressed. So, you know, if you guys were to circle on the calendar, uh, again, those agents, those team leaders that are watching, you're looking to maybe attend one or two uh, luxury events a year. 
you know, Brad Inman does such a great job with their luxury event. It used to be every October in uh, Beverly Hills and, and it was going to be in July in Vegas this year, but you know, because of COVID-19, I think that's going to, uh, you know, take a year off, but this would be uh, Teresa and Linda Fernandez and the Miami Congress event, which uh, right now is slated to be in November uh, would be definitely a, a must attend if, Again, knowing your feeder markets for those broker owners, team leaders, you got to know feeder markets, where buyers and sellers are coming from. We might use the term migration patterns in real estate terms, but when we're talking as consumers, what are your feeder markets? Of course, Miami's got a lot of feeder markets, but uh, that's one of the things I was so impressed with Teresa and her team, uh, what they provide. Um, different languages, different countries, different relationships, bringing extra value. Um, and again, you, you strike up relationships with some of these team leaders or broker owners from these other countries, and you might be able to share each other's listings if there is some kind of feeder market connection there. So um, very, very Absolutely. Helpful. We actually call it the place to do business. And there are some deals that are actually done at the Congress. You asked me to provide the link and it's miamicongress.com. miamicongress.com is the link for uh, next year, which is the 26th annual uh, event. I was at last year and I'll be there this year, knock on wood. Good job. Um, it was such a great event. Um, and I did forget to look up the dates though. That's why I was looking off to oh, the side. So it's okay. November eight to 10. Okay, and the whole idea behind it is um, you have people flying in internationally to the States for the NAR a conference. Uh, so you guys are trying to kill two birds with one stone. Hey, you're flying in, you know, in this case to New Orleans, stop in Miami for a quick two or three days and then head over to New Orleans. Correct. Is that why you yeah, And who wouldn't want to stop in Miami for two or three or four or five days? <laughs> oh, I love it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, a couple other questions and we'll open it up uh, again. If you guys have any questions for Teresa, um, please in the chat box, if you're on the zoom training or on Facebook live, my assistant will send it over again. You can share this uh, Facebook live uh, on your Facebook account. Uh, and we'd greatly appreciate it. Before I forget, we do these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, this is our fifth show. On Wednesday of this week, I have my good friend, Craig Hogan, who runs Global Luxury. With, that's basically, Cobalt, it is Cobalt Bankers Luxury Division. Craig does a great job. Uh, they have one of the strongest luxury divisions out there. On Friday, I have Brad Inman on our show. And next uh, week, I have uh, the, the world leader from FIOPSI on Monday and Rebecca Jensen next Wednesday, who runs the sixth largest MLS. And next Friday, it's hard to believe, but I believe next Friday, if my math is correct, next Friday is May 1st, I have Ann Miller who runs Remax's luxury division. So those are our next guests. Uh, but getting back to Teresa right now, a couple questions I have for you. Um, again, uh, you answered the one. Uh, is win at home, uh, win at home. So your husband who I met, great guy, he's from Missouri. Um, and so I don't know how often you were working from home versus how often you're working from home now, but uh, we started a, a little series called Win at Home for those agents, team leaders, broker owners that, you know, working at home might not be natural. There's additional stresses, technology, makeshift backdrops, whatever. Um, any suggestions for uh, those agents, those team leaders that are, are adapting to work from home to be more successful, maybe be less stressed, um, more efficient. Any suggestions that you have uh, based on what you're doing or a team, someone on your team? Well, we've got 65 people out there that are in various stages of how much space they have available in their homes to be able to dedicate to an office or their workspace. Um, we have one that has uh, five children and um, she and her husband both work for us. And uh, we've got others that have one or two kids. We've got some that have the furry kids. And uh, what I like is when we're doing the internal Zoom meetings, every now and then we'll have a cat or a dog walk across the screen. And um, so since I don't have an animal, that's about as close as I can get to them, but it's kind of fun. Sure. Um, so the, the biggest issue is when the kids see you at home and, and so they don't understand why you can't help them or why you can't work with them. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a challenge. My kid, 
uh, we've been married um, 53 years almost. And next month. Still hasn't grown up, has he? I love no, it. he hasn't. I love he, it. <laughs> and, and, and our son says, uh, you know, I always said I had two kids. One of them uh, will never grow up. And, and, that, and my son agrees with that. Um, so anyway, the, he thought I was going to be around a lot more. And what he didn't realize so much is that I was going to be working all that time. But what is nice is um, I never get a lunch break and I never get to have lunch with him. So around whatever our Zoom meetings are after this Zoom call, um, we're going to have lunch. And so we really enjoy that. And then sure. we do plan on whenever it is that I get off the last call, um, you know, doing something together special, you know, kind of like our little happy hour or something. Good, nice. But if we nice. go out on the deck and, and look at the ships that are going to nowhere or yeah. um, the, the highways that aren't nearly as busy as the, they were. Yeah. But it's, it's great to still be able to be with each other even when I'm still working full time and beyond. Mm -hmm. And That's he has great. his office and we just um, remodeled the place and expanded, which was really good timing. Timing, um, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes he has to, to go behind two or three doors so that he can watch TV and it doesn't interfere with uh, with my meetings, mm -hmm. but it all works out. And, and your husband's first name again? John. John, yeah, I met John and he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan, isn't he? Yes, he is. You know, I was thinking about that uh, as I was watching yesterday uh, a it's called The Last Dance. It was on the Chicago Bulls in the 90s with Michael Jordan. And, you know, with COVID-19, I mean, we were about, you know, 30 days away uh, where the, that Super Bowl might not have ever taken place. So uh, for those Kansas City Chiefs fans, I'm sure they're glad they got it in. Yeah, my best friend all the way through high school, uh, she and her husband came in and scheduled it even before the Chiefs were going to be in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get tickets because they were so expensive. But we we and they did everything else Super Bowl while they were here. Oh, and okay. um, my home has nothing about sports in it. Her home is all Kansas City Chiefs. So okay. it was like a dream come true for her. Okay. Although there was a lot of cussing and other things going on during most of the game. Oh, yeah. uh, it turned out great. Yeah, it, it uh, came down to the end. Uh, it was yeah, great really. Uh, by the way, I am typing in here uh, for those that are on the Zoom call, just some free resources that we provide. Um, so we have a, a, a vlog, a video blog, where we put free content out there for agents, team leaders. We have a podcast, uh, which I uh, would love to have you on our podcast sometime, Teresa. We just released, I think, our 86th episode and a lot of other free resources. I just typed it in the chat. And moving forward, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh share one swag here. I'm a big uh, swag guy. So this is my new shirt here. We're calling it Luxury CEO. And, oh, I like that. Uh, and then I have a lot of different hats. You can, it's on one of the links, but uh, just Lux is kind of our brand. And um, so you can check it out at luxuryspecialsgear.com. But we have some great questions coming in. I want to address those um, right now for you. So uh, I think you can probably read some of them as well. But let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one is, uh, it's a compliment. Uh, one of your members, I believe, Jordan uh, Wayers, forgive me, Jordan, for maybe mispronouncing your last name. Teresa, how do you keep uh, your organization so nimble and able to act on a dime? Some organizations, as they get bigger, become slower to move. Uh, great point. Well, it's actually very easy because it's, it's our culture. It's our mindset. And so every one of our employees are, are like um, independent contractors from a standpoint of their, they have full responsibility for the area of work that they're involved in. But in addition to that, they're also part of our overall leadership team. And that means that the newest hired person can give us suggestions on anything that is across any of the departments in the association. And all of those come directly to me. And so at year end, when we do our, our annual reviews and conferences, I always remind them a couple of times prior to that. But in, in a two month period of time, I must have received 120 suggestions and we were able to implement almost half of them on the spot. 
and some of the others we already did, but it gave us a good indication that we need to make sure that our people know that we're doing them. And then others would take a little more time, so I give them to whoever would be responsible for implementing them. So it's, it's a culture of we can do it, we can do it now, it's gonna take two months, what can we do to make it not take two months? And there must be a faster way to do this. And so, you know, we're ready, fire, aim. And um, the teams, they actually, some of, us, some of us work around the clock and over the weekend and somebody will come up with an idea. And, you know, one of our leaders came up and said, we need to do some well-being, a, a, a you know, mental well-being program for our members. And so I Great idea. Out, I sent it out to my team that's involved in education and within an hour she had a great suggestion. The chairman of the board and the residential president, um, who uh, Alberto Perillo, who suggested it, said that's great. And I swear to God, within an hour she had the speaker contacted, confirmed, and now all we have to do is schedule the date. Now that's amazing. That's just one indication, but that's exactly the way it goes. And and everything is done by a team. And so everybody gets involved in whatever the suggestion is. And as soon as we've got the, the right uh, approach to it, then they're empowered to do it and, and report back as they need to. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. that, that's amazing. And, and you know, the, the mental aspect of things, you know, um, part of our, our designation, we have a module dedicated just to mindset, right? And we call that the foundation. And in this industry, we get kicked in our shins enough with, you know, maybe a past client or somebody, you know, interviews you, they hire somebody else and that stings, that hurts as an agent. And, you know, I tell agents, you know, it's just like, I like using sports analogies, you know, you're, you're, you're if you're a wrestler and you get pinned, you got to pin your, pick yourself off the mat, right? And Lisa Hayes one says, be careful how you talk to yourself, because guess what, you are listening. So, you know, as, as agents sure. shelter in place, you know, some are, some are left brain analytical, more introverts, and maybe the shelter in place hasn't affected them as much as the extroverts and, and the right brain people that need to be around people. They feed off the energy, they feed off others, they feed off events. And those agents, you know, check in on those agents. And if you're one of those, that's a natural, um, that's, a, that's a natural um, downtime that you're going through right now, like a down curve. So surround yourself with someone, an accountability partner, continue to train. Um, you know, my wife is doing some great things at our, our, our school district because a lot of the lower income kids, about 40% of our school district, you know, they, they rely on the schools for the meals. So she's helping raise and it makes her feel better because she's helping others up. So whatever you uh, can help you that are watching, uh, you know, make someone's day and they'll make you feel better. The other thing I want to mention quickly when they talk about how we can, how can we respond so fast with 4,000 education programs a year, some of them are the technology training that are done over and over again and in different locations. Sure. Because we, during a normal year, have 5,000 new members a year coming into the association. Okay. So we're always training, retraining, and, mm -hmm. and doing different kinds of programs. But we, we haven't had normal committees, like education committees and, and those kinds of groups since 2003. All right, so that's 17 years. But what we did instead of a 20-person education committee trying to decide what 12,000 or now 50,000 people need in terms of education, everybody has the same right and opportunity to recommend courses, programs, topics, speakers. And Letty Oliver that you mentioned is our chief of professional development. And she's just amazing. So when the idea is. comes in, she looks at it and says, you know, we haven't done one of those for a while. And I swear to God, she'll have it set up within a day or two. Mm -hmm. And and we'll have a program. And when we see it's going to sell out, she'll get the next one scheduled so that people aren't disappointed and they're able to attend the next one. But members are constantly on their little evaluation sheets for each course or yeah just out of the blue, emailing or texting us ideas, just like the one that he happened to be president of residential, but it's still a great idea, mm -hmm. even if a, a member we've never heard of sent it in. Yeah. So that's part of what makes us who we are is because 
we've got 50,000 people giving us guidance. God yeah. help us. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that that's, could be a good thing. I'm sure there's a lot of headaches <laughs> with that as well, because everybody's got an opinion today with social media and everything else, um, which is a good reminder. You know, one of the things that uh, we do is I created these objection handling playing cards. So literally a card to deck with That's different right. objections. And um, I, I, I did I get you a copy? Yes, of, you did. Yes, you yes. got me one of those. And I thought I did. And one of those says, uh, remember to agents, both Democrats and Republicans, as well as independents, and maybe socialists, whatever, they, they, they buy and sell a lot of homes. So again, my recommendation for those of you on, I, I recommend you, you keep politics off social media because you're going to alienate half of your database. Um, so that's an extra tip for today. Um, all right, we have uh, uh, Christian um, has a great question. Uh, but before we do that, we did have one person ask if you can name the resource that you guys made available with the video um, where they can do up for the first 15 listings. Yes. Um, I'll type, what's the emo, name of that? I'll em it's Emo Viewer, I M M O. Uh huh. Viewer. V i e w e r. Yes. Dot com. Yes. All right. I just typed that into the chat feature for everybody. So um, we've got that one that has all those services. But like I say, we also have the new one from HomeSnap, the new one from Remind. Uh, we have one with Agent Three Thousand. So I mean, we've got lots of resources for them, and of course, the new open house program that is going to allow them to feature not only a property that is virtually open, meaning the agent is going to be there during that time to talk with them. But we're also going to put all of the, the ones that agents set up in the MLS. They simply set it up as a, a, um, a virtual tour okay. and set it up for like 30 days so it doesn't expire or 90 days so that it doesn't expire, whatever it is. They just won't put an hour on that. So okay. we're promoting all of the videos that they do from any of the sources, including the really high end ones that they pay for. Yeah, oh, that's great. That's great. Um, what, what, in your opinion, this is from Christian uh, Torzel, uh, says, what's the best strategy to bring, uh, to bring client to luxury properties? So I'm gonna uh, reword that a little bit based on what Christian said. What, what are best strategies? Well, of course, during this COVID-19 time, Christian, you know, having a strong online presence is huge, right? So amazing photos and, and video or maybe 3D walkthroughs. So I'm a big believer in, in the videos with, you know, the drones and the videos of not just the outside, but also the inside with some good bullet points so people know what they're looking at. But uh, I do believe in the, the 3D uh, dollhouse virtual tour, Matterport, whatever. It doesn't even have to be Matterport, but some for, form of virtual tours. I definitely recommend that for those properties that are, you know, 5,000 square feet and above and the video. I recommend both. I, if, I, if you were to ask me one or the other, I believe in the video over the walkthroughs. Uh, excuse me, the virtual tours, just because you can leverage it more and SEO it and, and, and that sort of thing. But I do recommend both for those unique properties. Uh, Teresa, would you like to add to anything that I? Just that because we're launching this new program, we've spent more time than usual in looking at some of the virtual tours that are out there uh -huh. and they should never be used for luxury properties if the person doesn't get better at doing them. So we're gonna focus a lot of attention on training uh, for our members. Um, a lot of videos, tutorials, um, Zoom web, Zoom conferences mm -hmm. on how to do good videos because that's really going to be important. And um, the, the uh, virtual open house and a couple of walkthroughs that we viewed on those mm, don't, don't come across well. Sure. And so this Could be is doing more process. harm than good is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. And so this is the time to really hone your skills or uh, create your skills. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was suggesting that some of the things, not just in the properties that you have listed, um, but in going out and doing a neighborhood or a feature in your, you know, in your market area uh, could also give you some experience with showing something in the voiceovers and all of that. People who are afraid of public speaking don't do enough of it. And so you just jump in, give it a try, you learn from it. Yeah. If it's recorded like these are, then even though you really don't want to go back and see yourself, sure. you go ahead and view yeah. it and say, 
what should I have done differently? What would yeah. I have done differently? And you also, um, one of my best teachers, source of, of, of teachers is just listening to other people. And so great speakers and listening to them and, and identifying why are they great? What makes them great to you? Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's, you feel like they're talking to you. Sure. They're not talking at an audience. They're talking right. to you. And that's what you do as well. And so it's really important for us and all of our, our members and your viewers to learn that if they don't have it down yet. Those are great words of advice. Uh, we, we have a module to our uh, designation just on video, and I recommend to folks, do some practice videos before you go live. Do some of that, you'll feel more comfortable. But one of the benefits of video is your authenticity comes through if you're being natural, right? So don't try to be fake, extra energy, that sort of thing. Talk maybe louder than you think you, on, on the first couple and record them to see what your sound is. But, you know, Teresa and I are just having a natural conversation. And that's what people want in today's day and age is, is, is be authentic and bring value to the table. And um, good is good enough. You don't have to be necessarily perfect. Sometimes I'll mess up on a live and I'll make fun of myself. And, and But people like that too, because you're being authentic. Because if it's well polished and scripted and it's clearly through a, uh, a teleprompter, there, there's a time for maybe those. But you know, when you're doing educational type videos or Facebook lives or something on your YouTube channel, by the way, Google is the number one search engine and YouTube is the second. So you know, for those of you that are watching, get a YouTube channel. All you need is a Gmail account and start creating some content out there. And you can do it on a $0 budget you know, if it's done properly. Uh, but that's a whole nother topic. But, uh, you know, I, I'm a former football guy and I, I say this all the time, shy real estate agents, Teresa, they have skinny kids. You, you can't be shy in this industry. You got to step outside of your comfort zone. That's really where the magic happens. I think also that, you know, as you and I both said, it's practice. Practice is the key. And, um, you know, giving it a try, listening back to it. But if you're talking at the video, mm -hmm it's not going to come across as well. Yeah. So what you need to do is, is imagine that you're talking to someone and just like I'm talking to you right now, there uh -huh. may be, uh, you know, some other people out there listening to it, but the important thing is that you and I can relate to each other and that the people who are listening understand that we care about them. And that's the reason that we're doing this. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come from a servant's mentality. You know, I checked in with some clients this morning and just, you know, checking in on their mental well-being, really just, hey, how are you doing, right? Don't come across salesy or, you know, that sort of thing, especially in this time, because that could backfire. I uh, have a podcast that's going to be released with a, a big tech company, and he brought up a good point. He said, you know, during the busy times, if you're producing videos and that kind of stuff, there's a lot of competition out there. It's hard to bring value when there's all life is happening but during this slow time sure on one cent there's tons of zoom trainings and stuff but if you really bring value to the table now like you, you're like basically 5xing it uh, because there's so many people that are pausing pulling back on marketing you're talking about how miami association you guys are investing in upgrades and that kind of stuff because your agents need it more so than ever unfortunately a lot of times people cut back on marketing and cut back on things and you know, those that are going to thrive and bounce back are those that are, are, are adapting and pivoting during this unprecedented time. We're also going to use a lot of our more experienced agents who have been using video for some time or using it really well. And our people are amazing at volunteering their time. And you know, our YPN group, you mentioned yeah. Kevin. So yeah. the YPN group is absolutely crazy. Um, when, when they're doing all of our video training and um, Zoom training and all of that. And I think we've got a couple of them here on the call. And so we're going to be calling out to a lot of our members who do such a good job to help others in the marketplace, because if they can help others to do better videos, then it's better videos they're going to have to show their customers as well. So it's really important. But Miami Association members are the best at sharing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, because I, I, there's a lot of agents that have that scarcity mindset. You know, you talked about 
sharing, but learning from others, right? Tony Robbins says success leaves clues, you know, iron sharpens iron. So, you know, take what somebody's doing that you like, tweak it, modify, st uh, put your personality onto it, right? And your style and, and, and then, you know, put it out there, right? And so um, that's really important. Any, uh, any last uh, words there? Anybody who wants to find out more about the Miami Association of Realtors or uh, we talked about miamicongress.com. Uh, you can find out more information about the event in November, but uh, any parting thoughts, Teresa? Uh, no, just thanks for doing this. We look forward to you coming back and doing more training with our people because the luxury market is extremely important to us, as you can imagine. All of our markets are extremely important, but some properties are easier to sell than others. Sure. And um, uh, it's important to us to bring the absolute best that we can to our members. And so we feel very bullish on the market. We Everything that we read, everything that we see is going to be that a lot of business is going to be coming into the Miami and South Florida market. And um, that's why we're ramping up. We're, we're making sure that our members can use this time most effectively so that they can take uh, full advantage of the market that's coming. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for your time. You're awesome. Keep it up, keep raising the bar. And if we can do any, if any service to you guys, let us know. And for those of you that, uh, again, we typed in the chat bar, some free resources, if we can help out, as I mentioned, Wednesday, we're going to have on the show, um, Craig Hogan from Cobalt Banker, uh, their luxury division does a great job. Friday, we have Brad Inman. Next Monday, Fiopsi. So same time, same place. We'll be streaming these live, 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central. And uh, Miami Realtors, you're more than welcome um, to join our future uh, live streams as uh, we're just trying to raise the bar during this uh, unprecedented time. So thank you, Teresa. And uh, thank you to your staff. And we'll talk soon. Thank you. Great job. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.